Good morning, Guardians. The Hijabi Gamer here, and it is already Friday, which came all of a sudden, but technically it was a shorter week. I had Monday off, which I nearly texted my boss just to be sure, and then realized she would probably throw something at my head on Tuesday if I sent her a text at 5 a.m. on Christmas morning. So I was like, yeah, no, we definitely, I just, I'm a little, just wanted to be sure. Anyway, it's Friday, as you can see, and Zer is not in the tower. He's in the reef. The fastest way to know whether he's in the tower or the reef is if you go to the tower and you don't see his purple mark by the stairs. Automatically, you know, then either you're too late or he's in the reef. Um, because this is Destiny 1, the usual reminder. Zer is only in the tower or the reef for 48 hours. So he arrives for me in New Jersey at 5 a.m. on Friday. And he leaves um, Sunday at 5 a.m. So depending on your location in the world, outside of New Jersey, it varies. Um, so by the time you see this video, you have less than 48 hours to locate Zer and pick up whatever you need. Which is actually, I think, better than Barrow Kittir. Barrow Kittir in Warframe is every other week. And he seems to disappear really, really fast. I, don't, I think he's only 36 hours because he's not here yet. I was just in Warframe. And I, I think this is a week for Barrow Kittir. At least you get a message every time from Barrow Kittir saying he's here and it's very easy to locate him. Um... Anyway, if I do try to throw my grenades, it's because I've been playing Warframe this week, and um, the grenade button in Destiny is slide in Warframe, so I'm kind of... Anyway, when he's in the reef, there's only one location you will find him, and he has some decent stuff, all right? He actually does have some good stuff. There's one weapon you absolutely have to pick up. If you don't have it, you need it. Trust me, you just need it. Anyway, he's always over here. It's a cool coke. Anyway, so first off, this is the weapon you absolutely need. If you don't have it, you should get it. Red Death. So Red Death and Steel Witch. Red Death is one of those weapons that I will carry with me at all times. It is a great weapon to have because of this one perk. Well, first of all, you're getting Steel Witch, which is the cooler ornament. I'm not a big fan. I know some people like, excuse me, White Witch. Eh, it's okay. Um, I don't know, it feels like your hands would get kind of constantly having to, I don't know, I, mean, I, I don't, you constantly have to be wiping your hands because the, the blood is getting on your, your gloves and it would probably get everywhere and is it magic, space magic blood that just keeps coming? Anyway, I'm a big fan of uh, Steel Witch, which looks ridiculously cool, but the reason you need Red Death is because each kill heals you and speeds up reload. So each kill heals you. The more kills you get, the more you heal. So this is great, for example, if exposure is in effect. Exposure means that your health does not regenerate. If you use Red Death, it will Red Death will regenerate your health for you. If you are having difficulty with something, Red Death is great because it will again heal you. So it will heal you faster. So it's great. It's a great weapon to have. I, I, I always recommend it. There's also, I know, a section at Crota's End where your health does not regenerate. So if you don't have Red Death and you have the Silver Dust and Strange Coins to pick it up, I highly recommend it. Like I said, I constantly carry it with me because just in case I ever need it. Red Death is one of those weapons that just it's great to have. It's great to just... It's a good one. It's it. It's a necessity. Okay. Next, you have the last word and sequel. I am. Which one is the last word? Oh yeah. I'm not a big fan of the last word. I know a lot of people like it. Um, this is sequel. I don't like worn weapons. I like it like this. I think it looks better without ornaments. I think it looks much better without ornaments. That looks like a sweet gun. I'm not a big fan of this. I like my guns to look cool, not broken. I know some people like the worn down look. It's more realistic. I get it. I'm more of a, yeah, I like, I like, I like this better. So, um, I'm not a big fan of the last word. This weapon has bonus accuracy while firing from the hip and improves stability and target accuracy. So basically it's a weapon to fire from the hip with. I will admit I'm not a big firing from the hip in Destiny. I need to work on that 
and practice that. I fire from the hip all the time in Warframe to the point where I, at one point, I just, I got completely thrown off because I've re- I, I'd forgotten I wasn't aiming, I wasn't uh, aiming down sights. It's faster with, um, with Destiny, with Warframe to uh, fire from the hip. Whereas with Destiny, I don't know, I never really tried, but I don't know. I'm not, I, I, it doesn't feel like it's the perks on an exotic. It doesn't feel like it's worthy of the exotic slot. This feels more like it should have just been a legendary, but let me know in the comments. Am I being unfair to the last word? I know a lot of people like the last word. I know it has a lot of, um, I know it has a lot of really good lore associated with it. You know, with, you know, Shin Ma 4 and Dredge and Yor and all of that. I know there's a lot of your lore associated with the last word. But as a weapon by itself, not a big fan. I, as I said, I've been, I'm a big fan of Ace of Spades. Because precision kills move one round from your ammo to the magazine and I hate reloading. It takes forever to reload. At least for me, everything takes forever to reload. So... I'm more of an Ace of Spades person. I also like the fact that the Ace of Spades is the hunter's gun. And in Destiny 1, if you aren't a hunter, you can't use the Ace of Spades. Your weapons suck, Titans and Warlocks. I'm sorry. Nobody remembers them. But everybody remembers the Ace of Spades. I mean, I think it's the Claylock. I can't remember. I know I have them in my vault. Maybe I'll go show them to you after I'm done with this. But nobody remembers the hunter. I mean, nobody remembers the Titan or the Warlock exclusive exotics but everybody remembers the hunter's ace of spades sorry warlocks and titans but then warlocks you lost your self res yeah so we have now we got the armor so the usual legacy engram which to me seems like overpriced this is something that darvo would sell yeah it just seems overpriced unless you have like a ridiculous amount of extra strange coins which i personally would throw into heavy ammo since because i think a person can never have enough heavy ammo since um not a big fan peregrine peregrine greaves for the titan shoulder charge deals bonus damage when activated in the air i don't know titans let me know it feels kind of flat for an exotic So you get bonus damage. Is it a significant amount of bonus damage? I guess when since I've been playing Warframe all week, um, I'm more used to gain 25% for every, you know, where everything's a percentage and a number. I've been watching also a garbage ton of Warframe, like, build guides and mod guides and just strings of numbers. Um... So it's just like, deals bonus damage when activated in the air. What is the bonus damage? A part of me is like, 25% more bonus damage? 50%? I don't know. Titans, let this poor hunter know. All right? You got it? Good. Good. All right. For the hunters, we have the... Oh, I didn't even... I didn't do this one. All right. Well, anyway. The Achilleophage Symbiote. A.K.A. the Symbiote. All right. Golden Gun gains one additional shot per use. This strikes me as something really good to use in the Crucible. Because now your Golden Gun has four shots. Or if you are dealing with a lot of high-end but not boss-level enemies. So, like, when I think of the Achilleophage symbiote, I think of the Scions at the beginning of the Brothers strike. Those guys are, like, really tough. But not ridiculously so. I just remember trying to burn through their solar, their void shields. But it's like strikes me as you have a whole bunch of enemies that are higher tier, like yellow bar enemies, but not bosses. If you're going up against a boss, you want to use the Celestial Nighthawk. Because the Celestial Nighthawk will turn your three shots into a single shot with the power of six. So it... it, it Celestial Nighthawk will burn through bosses, but you only have one boss, so you can handle one shot. This, you now have four shots, so it strikes me something really great for Crucible, because everyone will be thinking, oh, they'll know, oh yeah, a hunter let us, you know, set off their golden gun, and then they go one, two, three, and you still have one more shot. So you'll take people by surprise too. So yeah, that strikes me, this is great for Crucible, and for like, when you have a whole bunch of guys you know what would be awesome also to use this for just hit me when you have daybreak 
when you have daybreak for the nightfall and your super is constant, then you can basically go through the nightfall with just wiping out everything with Golden Gun. That would actually be pretty sweet. Now that I think about it. I gotta see what the nightfall is and see if it's a... Uh, that would actually be pretty, pretty cool. I never thought of it. But that would actually be nice. All right, next we have the Skull of Dire Ahamkara for the Warlocks. And Warlocks, I hate to break it to you, this breaks the Corpus Helmet rule. So the Corpus Helmet rule is if your helmet is bulkier than a Corpus Helmet, the Corpus are laughing at you. And yes, that is just... I, d I don't understand how Warlocks, their helmets can sometimes be so bulky. And you're wondering how they move their heads. Look, the Corpus Helmet is on the tip of overbulky. On top of that, I figure the Corpus Helmet probably has a HUD on the inside. So they could probably see everything. It probably has, like, who knows what features. I mean, it's thousands of years in the future. But Corpus Helmet is, like, the edge of too bulky. And a lot of times you don't even see them all wearing helmets. At least in cutscenes. I mean, Viso was wearing a helmet. I wonder what happened to his helmet. Maybe we can, uh, I don't know. Delusions of Grandeur. Okay, so that's just... Okay. Take reduced damage while using Nova Bomb. Improved energy drain abilities. Alright, Warlocks. I have no idea if this is good or bad. You see, as I've said before, the only reason I used Warlock was for self res So I have never used a Nova Bomb ever as a Warlock. I am sorry, Warlocks. But, uh, it was all about the self res Let me know in the comments below what I'm missing out, Warlocks. But honestly, I mean, I mean the, so the flaming swords were pretty cool, and I did play Warlock a little in Destiny 2. Yes, but, anyway. The last gun, the fourth horseman. Honestly, this one does not stand out in my head. This weapon can be fired in full auto mode. I know war shotguns in full auto mode are awesome, don't get me wrong, but they also burn through ammo. Final round, the last round of the magazine deals bonus damage. My only issue with final round is how many people actually shoot the final round. I mean, for me, at any moment when I have a pause, I am reloading, especially shotguns, because shotguns take forever to reload. So it's like, okay, you get through a room, even if you have two or three shots left, you're reloading it. So the problem for me with final round is nine out of ten times I never make it to the final round, because any pause in the action, when I get a moment, I am going to reload it. And you're going to have to train your brain when you're using the fourth horseman to to be like, all right, all right, don't reload. So that's why I, I all of the guns with final round, my instinct is, yeah, that sucks. I mean, I get it. Last round of the magazine. So it's not like the uncertainty of which one is it? The, 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 the exotic hand cannon that my brain is freezing on that has like random bullets that are bonus damage you know which one is going to give you the bonus damage you know the last shot is going to give you the bonus damage but the problem is you have to make it to the last shot and just i have been in too many circumstances where i am standing there reloading and i'm i'm about to get killed by something because i need to reload so that's why I'm not a big fan of final round. Then we got return to sender. Kills with this weapon have the chance to grant bonus ammo to the magazine. All right, that's pretty cool. I don't know. I barely use the fourth horseman. It does not stand out. It's just like shotgun. Nothing about this. I mean, kills with this weapon have the chance. Nothing about this shotgun screams kick-ass exotic. There's just, I don't know. Comment down below. I feel like there are a lot of other exotic secondaries, like the Invective that's still, and the Telesto, that scream kick-ass exotic better than the Fourth Horseman. Please tell me down below in the comments. I want to hear from you people. Even if I don't respond, I'm trying to read them because I want to get good. Now, 
for all the people who still keep commenting about Destiny 2. Do I play Destiny 2? Yes. Have I played it in the last month? No. Has the connection of the servers gotten better? Let me know in the comments down below. Honestly, I've been playing... One of the nice things about playing less Destiny and Destiny 2 is that I've been playing other video games. Yes, I've been playing Warframe because of the whispers in the wall that just... That update just came about and my account did merge which is wonderful so I'm enjoying the fact that my account did merge so I can now play Warframe on the same account where they merged all my resources and everything into it they merged my resources so like all of my Warframes everything was merged into a single account that I can now play on Xbox PlayStation PC and switch and I have the Steam Deck so my PC account, so, so I don't even need to do remote play. I just go on my Steam Deck. Warframe runs natively on the Steam Deck and play my complete account. Whereas with Destiny 2, you will get banned if you use Destiny 2 on the Steam Deck. So I like Destiny 2. A part of me is kind of turned off by it just... Anyway. On top of that, they're doing the cookies again. Oh, joy. And the cosmetics in, in Destiny 2... Look, I'm not a big cosmetic person. But there's a lot more variety of cosmetics in Warframe. And you can get them in more ways. They basically throw cosmetics at you. So, yes, you can buy cosmetics. So, no, I play Destiny 2. I am... I, I, yes... I play Destiny 2, alright? I paid the $100 for Lightfall. I finished Lightfall, alright? I haven't yet pre-ordered the final shape. And honestly, I will pre-order the final shape when they kill Nimbus. Kill him. Just, just embarrass him. Make it a humiliating death. But, look, I played thousands of hours of Destiny and Destiny 2. And you have burned me out, Bungie. Alright? If you have burned someone like me out, you know, someone who when Destiny 2 launched bought it three times for $100 each so I can play it on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Um, right. On the top of that, to the people who keep criticizing about Destiny 1, a lot of people haven't played Destiny 1, and if you want to fill in a lot of the lore gaps, play original Destiny. Destiny 1 is a complete game. Yes, there are no updates, but it is still fun, and a lot of people haven't played it, and I still enjoy Destiny 1. There is a challenge to Destiny 1 that isn't there in Destiny 2. There is an ability as a primarily solo player to enjoy more out of original Destiny than Destiny 2. There are new people in Destiny 1, all right? I have seen often new people in Destiny 1. So, this whole idea that you can't play Destiny 1 anymore, or don't expect Bungie to keep it up, they sell the game, and there are people who are coming into it. There are people who've never played it, who want to see what, you know, the precursor to Destiny 2. Um, it's, again, it's a complete game. There are only two things missing from Destiny 1. Trials and Iron Banner. All of the other updates happen. Okay, weekly raids, nightfall, all of the weekly resets happen in Original Destiny. All you are missing, again, is Trials and Iron Banner. Everything else is here. You can run raids, and there are people running raids. Alright? Anyway, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Comment down below. School me. Appreciate it. And uh, I hope to see you in the tower.